Triprem 64 palms. Two palms. Four palms. Eight palms. Sixteen palms. Thirty-two palms. <laughs> So breakfast, uh, first meal uh, on the cut, we've got 450 grams of egg whites, a handful of uh, red onion, 80 grams of oats with 150 grams of berries, some cinnamon and some stevia. We've got a coffee uh, with a little bit of skim milk and two fish oil tabs because um, I'm just not eating, eating any fish um, or, or not eating any fatty fish or sort of egg yolks on this diet, so my omega-3 intake will be pretty low, so that's just to cover that base. Um, and then I'll sip on a bit of sugar-free lemon iced tea because that is my favorite. Have a major crush on her. <laughs> right, so these will be the other meals that I'll be having uh, on this cutting diet. So it's pretty much a meal plan to be honest. Um, so I'm having five meals a day and if you map that over, over seven days, that's 35 meals. 30 of those meals will be meals you see here um, plus breakfast. And then I'll have um, five flexibly track meals if I head down to uh, Monty's and, and get a scrambled eggs on toast or something like that. Um, I'll just, I'll just play with the leftover calories um, and have a couple of flexible meals, but most of it will pretty much be uh, on plan. And I do that because number one, it just avoids the decision fatigue. And I find that when you're calorie restricted, uh, making a whole lot of decisions about your food every single day and, and what, your sort of what crafty concoction you can whip up with your leftover 400 calories, for the day can expend a, a whole lot of energy and that doesn't really um, serve any beneficial purpose in my uh, opinion. It just makes you extraordinarily food focused, uh, to be honest. So roughly I'll be eating the, these same meals every day. So this will be my lunch, which I'll have in around three hours after breakfast. We've just got um, four slices of bread, some beetroot, 150 grams of chicken, and a little bit of rocket on there. Then I have a bowl of fruit with that meal. That's 250 grams of rock melon and just a medium apple chopped up. This will be uh, my pre-training meal uh, when I lift weights. So I've got 100 grams of oatmeal in here with two scoops of the bulk nutrients uh, protein matrix mixed in. And I've just tossed in a little bit of uh, cinnamon some sugar-free syrup and a little bit of salt. Then post-training, so this will be like my evening meal around 7.30 p.m. We've got 150 grams of chicken again, 250 grams of brown rice. Nothing special about brown rice, I just find that um, it is a little bit harder to get down. Um, it digests a little slower, slower and it can just help with the, the appetite regulation a little bit. Um, and then I've just thrown on a little bit of kimchi for flavor. And then I, I've, you can't see it, but I've actually mixed in some, some soy sauce through there. Uh, with that, just for some added volume, I've got one medium carrot chopped up and one medium orange chopped up. And then my last meal pre-bed is this little casein pudding. So it's two serves of casein just mixed around and it's, you can see it's, it's quite thick, like a, like a custard. And then I've just mixed in another 150 grams um, of berries with that. And then outside of this, all I'll really be having is um, a can of diet soda uh, with dinner, just to help with a bit of stomach volume. Um, and, I'll, and I have um, a couple of black coffees 
uh, throughout the day when needed, um, like before training. Um, but that's pretty much what the cutting diet is going to be like. And all up, this is around 3,500 calories. So roughly 1,500 calories below what I was eating previously at the end of um, my bulk. So I expect that the two to three kilos will come off in the first week um, just from that calorie adjustment alone and as the glycogen gets pushed out and the fluid gets pushed out that's bound to it. Another benefit of keeping meals more consistent during a cut is it makes the weigh-ins on the scale each day uh, a little bit more predictable. Um, if you're constantly changing food sources um, like with flexible dieting every single day that's changing your sodium intake that's changing your fiber intake it's changing your food volume and that can make basically make your day-to-day -day, um, weigh-ins quite wishy-washy and hard to see uh, what's going on whereas if you're keeping foods relatively controlled it's a lot easier to see what's going on and expect what's going to happen and then sort of your calorie adjustments can be a lot more accurate once you hit plateaus and, and things like that so in terms of how is this different to um, my bulking diet, basically there's a massive reduction in processed foods. It's a really low fat diet. Um, there's very uh, little um, calorie laden sources used, um, not getting any liquid calories or very minimal liquid calories, basically because processed foods, sources and liquids, they're just not very satiating form of calories. Now, my hunger, I know that it's gonna ramp up as soon as I, as, as soon as I start on this diet. So um, to get sort of on the front foot of um, appetite management, I like to sort of minimize those things that, that aren't very um, satiating. And instead, I'll use things that are sort of high volume and quite low energy density, like rock melon, um, carrots, oranges, brown rices, oatmeals, things like that, where um, they can give you, they can provide quite a large food volume um, with not a lot of calories. So the plan on this cutting diet is to drop around 12 kilos in 12 weeks. Um, that shouldn't be too much of an issue for me. Um, I got as high as 111 kilos um, this off season. Out of, um, I started my massing phase um, down around 94 kilos. So um, a fair bit of weight's been added um, and obviously a fair chunk of that's gonna be fat, glycogen, and a bit of fluid. So I had my DEXA scan done at the end of this mass phase. Um, you can see total mass there, 111.5 kilos, um, with a body fat percentage of 15.2. Um, that feels super fat on me, by the way. Um, I couldn't imagine going higher than 15%. Than I'd just be a lump of shit. Um, and my fat-free mass, so how much would I weigh if we took all my fat off, is 95.1 uh, kilos. So. Um, Yes, we're gonna lose some, a little bit of fat-free mass during this cut, but uh, the plan is to try to keep this fat-free mass number as close to um, 95 kilos as I can, and that's gonna be achieved with regular, evenly spaced protein feedings, keeping carbohydrates as, as high as I can, and um, training hard, and um, not being too aggressive with um, the rates of weight loss in the latter end of the cutting phase. Like at the start when I'm fat, um, I'm, I'll have no issues losing a couple of kilos a week um, sort of thing. Um, basically when you're at a high body fat, the risk of muscle loss is just super, super low. So um, there's, there's upside to actually going faster at the start where you can get a bunch of fat off. Your performance probably not gonna dive yet. You're not gonna, you're not gonna lose any muscle mass. But then as you get leaner, um, sort of slow things down. And I know everyone's gonna ask because they think I'm the, the intermittent dieting guy, but um, there's gonna be no refeeds, no diet breaks um, in this 12 weeks. We're just gonna get in, get it done, get the fat off and then and then get out. I find that sort of overusing refeeds and diet breaks can just, unless you're in a contest prep, it just sort of unnecessarily elongates the process. Um, and I don't want to be spending um, six months dieting. I'd rather just get it off in, in three months 
and then get back to, to progressing once I'm at a lean body comp.